Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Dr. Sharid Rahman, so one of the research fellows at Monash University and here, here at Melbourne in Australia. So today we'll be talking about two-dimensional uh, hetero two-dimensional materials and when they're more heterostructures for various optoelectronic applications. So uh, as we know, two-dimensional materials uh, are actually atomically thin materials, and they can be thinned down to the atomic uh, atomic level by several different methods. So atomically thin materials, uh, so two-dimensional materials can be synthesized to the atomic level by either by Van der Waals, uh, Van der Waals mechanical exfoliation, or they can also be synthesized using chemical vapor deposition and physical vapor deposition as well. So due to their atomic configuration and uh, due to the layer structure, they can be stacked up in, on top of another, and, and as a result, they can be integrated into form, integrated to form many different kind of heterostructures. So these heterostructures uh, can be uh, can be functionalized and synthesis can be functionalized into many different kind many different kinds, and they can have many different applications in optoelectronic devices. So heterostructures are uh, usually formed uh, can be can uh, usually uh, usually form into three different types. For instance, one of them is type one, type two, and type three. So type one heterostructures are usually one uh, usually formed when uh, when the band gap of one of the material is larger is is very large than the band gap of the other material, and it completely engulfs the other material, resulting in uh, unidirectional charge transfer. However, in type two retrospective, there is bidirectional charge transfer, and there is uh, both movement of electron and hole within the within the within the conduction band and the balance band. So, for instance, as a result, when we combine two different kind of materials, uh, we can form many different kind of functional materials, and as a result, as we will see, we'll have a lot of many different applications. So when it comes to so one of the one among the three different kind of heterostructures, the most interesting kind or the one that has received a lot of a lot of attention in the past decade is the type two heterostructures, because in type two heterostructures what happens is that uh, we have interlayer excitons. So when the electron from one of the layers, I mean electrons from one of the material combines with the hole from another layer or it, 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 it combines together to form an interlayer exciton. So the reason it's called an interlayer exciton is because the electron and hole are from two different materials, so they are uh, separate, and so they are separate and they are not in the same material. So compared to interlayer excitons, so compared to interlayer excitons, so the interlayer excitons, uh, inter interlayer excitons usually have very large binding energies, and usually have usually have very long lifetime. So as a result, these interlayer excitons are actually, uh, uh, <clears throat> yeah, actually are actually very interesting, and they have been researched very heavily in the last decade. So these interlayer excitons have been demonstrated very uh, has been demonstrated in many different kind of material system. For instance, let's say if we talk about uh, traditional material system like aluminum gallium nitride or gallium nitride, they have already been demonstrated. Uh, in, uh, they have already been they, they have already been demonstrated to form this kind of IX uh, at very low temperatures. However, the, there was a major drawback for this kind of interlayer excitons in three five nitride semiconductors. One of the major drawbacks was that is these uh, interlayer excitons only are uh, can only be formed at room temperatures. It can only form at very low temperatures, and as a result, their binding energies are very very low. So, in order to overcome this, uh, in order to overcome this uh, particular problem, <clears throat> and as a result, two-dimensional materials have actually received a lot of interest. So, in two-dimensional materials, the it's especially indirect nature of the interlayer excitons allows it to uh, results in the overlap of electron and hole wave functions. And as a result, uh, these interlay excitons in two-dimensional materials have very strong binding energy, around 100 to 200 milli electron volt. And as a result, these uh, interlay these interlay excitons can exist at room temperature. <clears throat> and as a result, these interlay excitons in two-dimensional materials also have very long lifetime, usually in the range of uh, nanoseconds and microseconds. In addition, these interlay excitons. Uh, so this is an example of an interlay of a heterostructure formed within WAC2 and MOAC2. And as you can see in the heterostructures, we have an interlayer exciton occurring at lower energy. And so this this two this two direct this two direction shows that the interlayer exciton within the heterostructures are uh, have <coughs> have uh, are are bidirectional. I mean, uh, so as a result, this can uh, as a result this particular uh, this particular interlayer excitons can actually drive the system to many different quantum phases, uh, and can as a result this allows the system to be controlled electrically and both optically. So this particular, uh, as a result, this kind of heterostructures have a lot of application in both Einstein condensates and superfluidity. So let's look at an example of, uh, <coughs> of of an example of an application of those interlay excitons. 
So one of the major application of those interlayer excitons is an excitonic transistor, where we have two different layers of semiconducting uh, semiconducting layers. So one of them is an electron-rich layer, and the other one is a hole-rich layer. So the combination of this electron and hole uh, combines together to form an interlayer exciton, and this interlayer excitons can flow within both the materials. So this uh, over this uh, super so this condensation of these interlayer excitons results in the formation of a superfluid. So this superfluid results in the formation of an electron flow, and as a result, there's a current flow in the opposite direction. So eventually, so, uh, so eventually, this can conduct electric current, and as a result, due to the formation of the superfluidity, this conduction of electric current can take place with least resistance or very low resistance. So as a result, this is equivalent to superconductivity. So as a result, <clears throat> interlayer excitons have very large range of up. So these interlayer excitons have very uh, major application in superfluidity and superconductivity as well. So this interlay excitons become even more interesting when there's a more simple lattice forming. So recently in two-dimensional materials, people have demonstrated that uh, when, two, when two different materials are stacked together with a certain angle of orientation or interlayer stacking angle, it can result in the formation of more pattern or more super lattice. So for instance, this is, is two-dimensional materials stacked together to form a heterostructure. And as a result, uh, when this is stacked together at a certain twist angle or a stacking angle, it can form this kind of more period. And this Moore period is large enough to trap an interlayer exciton to form a Moore exciton. And this Moore exciton have very large binding energy and it can exist at room temperature. So for instance, this is this particular, in this particular diagram, this, uh, this blue cube is, uh, shows the, shows a Moore super lattice. So within a particular Moore super lattice, there are three regions of interest, region A, region B, and region C. So this three diagram shows the top view of three of those regions. So the difference between three of these regions is, is, in the, is in the variation of the interlayer distance. For instance, in region A, the distance, <clears throat> interlayer distance is quite large, whereas in region C, the interlayer distance is quite narrow. And so difference in this interlayer region, so different in this interlayer distance results in the, results in the formation of different more period or more, uh, different more period or more, uh, more energy. And as a result, it can trap many different kinds of uh, interlayer excitons. So usually the binding energy of this uh, Moore period is also uh, is usually around 100 to 200 millilitre volt. As a result, these interlay excitons can exist at room temperature. <clears throat> so <clears throat> this particular interlay excitons, or uh, the or more or more specifically more excitons, are actually very sensitive to the twist angle. So as you can see from this particular graph, if we from this particular graph, if we keep increasing the twist angle, the quantum yield of the Moore exciton decreases. So the quantum yield is very large when the interlayer, when the twist angle is close to zero or when the twist angle is close to 60 degree. So this is because <clears throat> at, the, at the near zero degree or near 60 degree, it is uh, the, the interlayer excitons are actually direct in the momentum space. And as a result, and it becomes indirect when the, inter, when the interlayer excitons, uh, when the twist angle is increasing. So eventually, people has tried to uh, visualize this kind of more excitons or more period in many using many different kind of characterization. So, for instance, uh, there are people nowadays can visualize this kind of more excitons. I uh, mean, more super lattice using high resolution transmission electron microscopy. Furthermore, people have also used uh, different kind of imaging techniques like uh, Kelvin force microscopy or scanning tunneling microscopy to visualize this kind of Moore pattern. For example, this is a Moore pattern from uh, forming between uh, molybdenum disulfide and tungsten disulfide. And it shows that uh, this, and they were able to capture this kind of very uh, interesting and beautiful patterns using a uh, scanning tunneling microscope and uh, KPFM as well. So these are also a few more period forming between tungsten disulfide and uh, molybdenum disulfide and also, um, and also MOS2 and MOS2 homobilis. So as you can see, the, this kind of uh, more pattern have actually different patterns and different layers. So this is due to the this is due to because the lattice mismatch or the lattice constant of each of these layers are different, and as a result, they can actually modulate the more pattern or the more or the more period. So this more period is actually governed uh, by this particular formula. So as you can see, it is dependent on the lattice mismatch between the two materials. So for instance, uh, in case of MOS2 and MOS2, the lattice mismatch is different from that of uh, WS2 and MOS2. And this particular Moore period is very sensitive to the twist angle. So as you can see, this Moore period is very large, which is about eight nanometer when it is near zero degree or near six degree. And is almost near to zero when the twist angle is very large. And so as a result, by changing the two, by changing the two uh, semiconducting materials within the heterostructures, we can modulate the Moore pattern and we can, uh, and, uh, we can modulate the Moore pattern and we can also modulate the Moore super lattice. 
And of course, by changing the twist angle or the stacking angle, we can also modulate the Mohr period as well. So for the modest motors, so this kind of uh, more heterostructures or more super lattice have very good application in uh, more exciton laser. For instance, in this particular work, uh, the researchers have shown that this particular more exciton can have a very good application in lasing. For instance, in this uh, in this work, people has uh, they, they have combined this heterostructure into a they have come they have integrated this more super lattice with, into a silicon into a silicon topological photonic crystal. And they were able to show that um, this kind of uh, this kind of uh, integrated uh, photonic crystal have a very, very, uh, very narrow layer has a very good application in lasing because uh, the emission wavelength is within the optical fiber communication, and the output has a very spect has a very high spectral coherence with a very narrow line width and a very high and a very good and a very high coherence time. So as a result, this is a very this is a very high uh, this is a very good lasing application. So considering the, taking the motivation from the literature, we uh, recently one of our work uh, was published in Nature, which was uh, which was actually a combination of the tungsten disulfide and tungsten disulfide heterostructure, and we were able to reduce the dielectric screening by uh, reducing by <clears throat> by etching the substrate, and as a result, we were able to obtain uh, interval excitons at room temperature, uh, at room temperature, and then uh, we were able to modulate them using temperature and many different uh, and, and few other factors. So due to the three different regions of interest, we were able to get uh, three different kind of uh, interval excitons at room temperature as well. Uh, so so this is uh, this, so this is the reason why interval excitons and more heterostructures are very interesting and uh, taking uh, and taking up a lot of speed in the recent times. Yeah, that's it for now. Thank you everyone for listening.